Purgatorio. Oops, I have to turn off the voices. I forgot I turned the voices on. Crap. Okay, so I have to re-record because I accidentally saved over the file. <laughs> Great. My dumbass saved over the file. I just love it when I just, like, screw up. Hmm. So I'm already emotionally compromised, so we can just... We can just hop on in. Welcome. All right. This will. It, it, don't worry that I'm emotionally compromised. It makes a perfect reading environment. Trust me. All right. Let's do this. <sighs> Rosa woke from her doze. It must have been a very deep sleep. Her mind was hazy, and she wasn't thinking clearly. Where was this? It felt like some mansion. But it seemed to be the Ushinomiya mansion. You could see a room that looked like a parlor. Some tea that had been prepared. It had probably been made for her. Around the room, some glitter that looked like gold leaf drifted about, making this scene look quite fantastical. When she eventually realized that they were gold butterflies, it further strengthened that impression. There was someone across from her. A woman. A lady. It was the portraits. Which? She seemed to be having a one-sided conversation. She was probably talking to Rosa, but Rosa, whose mind was clouded up by a deep fog, didn't have a clue what was being said. Choose whatever you please. If there's anything you want, I'll give it all to you. You can think of it as a reward for your good luck, or Elsa's proper compensation for how you've answered to my demand. It may have been a truly trivial matter from your perspective, however the deal was important enough to me to be deserving of this reward. What is she talking about? I don't know. I don't know. It's just that I'm very much a witch. Perhaps you best ask for something only a witch can give you. What a rare chance this is, to actually receive the favor of Beatrice the Golden, me. <laughs> Finally, Rosa started to feel the blood flowing through her body. Her movements were still sluggish. She couldn't even voice the words she was thinking. <clears throat> I'm commonly called the Golden Witch. The stony amount of gold like the one I gave Kinzo is trivial to me. After all, you can measure all the pleasures of the human world with money. Therefore, gold is no more or less than the manifestation of the human world's pleasures. Can you imagine it? A mountain of gold that you couldn't use up as long as you lived. As the witch blew on her pipe, multicolored smoke enshrouded their surroundings. As she did this, the inside of the parlor was suddenly filled with stacks of gold ingots. It looked like a shining gold-colored wall. If each ingot was worth several ten million yen, how much would all of this be worth? It seems sinful to even think of such a number. However, the human world is difficult. I know there are some things that cannot be settled, no matter how high into the sky you pile up gold. I know there are cracks that cannot be filled. I won't make light of that, which is why this is a gift that only a witch such as I can give. Why don't I fill in those cracks for you? Yes. How about this? It's something only I can give. You should be very happy. No need to thank me out loud. I can tell right away. It's written on your face in the corners of your heart. <laughs> Rosa felt a touch of discomfort at this witch who kept on talking, even though Rosa hadn't uttered a single word. But since she still couldn't manage to speak, and was so helpless that it was difficult to even move a finger, she couldn't do anything but listen. How far must the- oops, my bad. How far must the deep wounds in your heart recede before they can be healed? 
This is deep, quite deep indeed. Sometimes wounds close up while a fragment of foreign matter remains inside. Even when such wounds appear to have healed, they continue to throb for all eternity. Sometimes you have to open the wound once more in order to heal it completely. As the witch spoke, she stared deeply into Rosa's eye. What in the world was she peering at? Rosa felt uncomfortable, but she couldn't look away. So, your pain was already faded by the time of your birth. A heartbreaking. You don't have to say it. I understand. I understand. Rosa was gradually being sucked into the witch's eye. Then the world grew dark, spinning round and round as she was sucked in. Rosa! Rosa! Why are you such an idiot? Oh, that's Krauss's voice. Krauss is a real adult, so he's very smart. So he hated the stupid kid, Rosa. He was a very scary person. I was often hit and my toys were taken away from me and broken. I was apparently being punished for something bad I'd done. I never really understood what it was or why I was being punished. I was always punished suddenly and then later told what the punishment was for in a forced manner. It was always something I didn't remember doing. So I really hated Krauss. Rosa, Rosa, why are you such an idiot? Oh, that's Ava's voice. Ava is a real adult, so she's very smart. But she hated the stupid kid, Rosa. She was always a very sly person, and she often lied to me and tricked me and bullied me all the time. Apparently I was stupid, and she said it was only natural for stupid people to be swindled by those smarter than them. So I wanted to become a wise person like Ava and listen to what she had said, when I obeyed her for some reason, someone always got really mad at me. So I really hated Ava. Rosa! Rosa! Why are you such an idiot? Oh, that's Rudolph's voice. Rudolph really knows how to get things done. So he hated the stupid kid, Rosa. When Krauss was around, he'd be friendly with Krauss. When Ava was around, he'd be friendly with Ava. And when Krauss wasn't around, he would be violent like Krauss. And when Ava wasn't around, he would play dirty like Ava. And even though he also was bullied most of the time, when Krauss and Ava weren't around, he gave me two people's worth of bullying. So I really hated Rudolph. Oh, but these were my memories from when I was a kid. It's common for unfair things to happen between kids. You mustn't hold on to grudges for such things forever. With time, those memories get buried away, and forgetting them bit by bit is supposed to be part of growing up and becoming an adult. So becoming an adult is the same as separating yourself from all those memories. And because of that, no matter how much time passed, Rosa couldn't become an adult. Even though she had been blessed with a daughter called Maria and was called a mother, she didn't at all feel like she had become an adult. The witch pitied her for that. She smiled, saying that she could heal that pain herself. How can I heal you? It's possible, but not easy. I might rewind time and giving you a world where you have no older siblings. But that way your memories of being hurt by your older siblings wouldn't remain. And in that sense, while you might call it a gift, you wouldn't be able to accept it. A person is only satisfied when their starvation is healed. But if you make it so they never starve in the first place, none of them will thank you. Just like how there are no young people who give thanks for their daily gluttony. Understand? I think she's telling me something really complicated. In short, even if she makes it so I never had older siblings, that wouldn't remove my pain. Maybe that's what she's saying. Strictly speaking, that's not quite right. 
Healing isn't the same thing as removing pain. It's the pleasure we earn as compensation for withstanding pain. Therefore, removing the pain isn't healing. To know the joy of healing, you have to know the pain. Which means, you must know joy in order to compensate you for your pain. You should be proud of your past suffering. After all, they are what make it possible for you to know pleasure that those without pain will never experience. Those who experience this pleasure cannot help but pass on the same joy to others. <laughs> when the witch snapped her fingers, even though the room was still filled with a mountain of gold and had already lost all semblance of reality, a fabulous tablecloth appeared on the top of the table, and a wonderful meal was laid out, almost as though it was the opening of a banquet in a castle from some fairy tale. For an instant, Rosa truly did feel a pleasurable surprise at how fabulous it was. But at the same time, she felt a bit of an anticlimax. After all, she didn't think being bullied by her siblings could be wiped away by just one meal no matter how delicious. Food is the source of many human pleasures. You simply must eat like a pig as long as you live. If one meal isn't enough, then have as many as you want. Until the pain of your heart is healed, why not continue this gourmet banquet? Begin it, furniture. As the witch clapped twice, there were suddenly two goat head servants there, and they began to prepare the meal. From the beautiful dishes adorning the table, they efficiently took some food and began to pile it up on Rosa's plate. It really did look delicious, but Rosa's body still felt as heavy as lead, and there was no way she'd be able to eat. Maybe they also understood that. The goat head servants tied a napkin around Rosa's collar and gallantly brought a glass of before-dinner alcohol to her mouth, tilting it for her. She remembered an old servant who had once carried rice porridge to her mouth when she was laid up with a high fever. She couldn't drink it well and it dripped down from her mouth, but she felt the fragrant sweetness spread throughout her mouth. It's a sweet aperitif of noble wrought German made wine. A wine cocktail of white wine mixed with a crimson golden drop. If I had to give it a name, I call it Bloody Crowns. Soak with just a golden drop of your blooders blood that was squeezed out of compressor. Rosa coughed violently, and the bright red that stained her face made it look as though she had coughed up blood. You know a lot about black tea, so you should know what that means, right? Golden drop refers to the last drop of a drink. It is called the most precious drop in black tea. So a golden drop of blood is the same. The last and most precious drop of blood squeezed out of a human. We squeeze it using that. As the witch snapped her fingers, a bright red veil that had been set up before something large was removed. The soul of a massive machine there was just like a coffin for a large-sized person with many large, bulb-like things stuck to it. And it looked sinister torture device. By its unnerving shape, she could tell that with a human strength it could be used to tighten and compress something. It seemed that there was still some squeezed dregs remaining, and because of the bright red remains that stained it. But you can't take more than one golden drop at once. No matter what kind of human you take it from, you can't get more than one drop. But... I am a witch. Reviving a person is easy for me. When the witch snapped her fingers, the human compressor suddenly began to shake. No, she could also hear a groan. It looked almost as though someone sleeping in that man-sized coffin had woken up and was now struggling to get out. But that was wrong. What was inside definitely had been squeezed dregs. Using her magic, the witch had once again revived the squeezed dregs to how they had been before they were squeezed. Three go-head servants with muscular physiques approached the compressor and forcefully started tightening the large bulb. As they did, an unearthly moan came from inside the coffin. Rosa thought she knew the owner of that voice. It is 
is fitting for cooking to be done in the kitchen. Enough. Stand back. Do you understand how precious a golden drop is? To have it stain this crimson requires that several dozen people's worth of blood be squeezed. The witch definitely said that only one golden drop could be taken from a single human, and yet she had dozens of people's worth of golden drops from a single human. Only a witch could do this. The golden witch Beatrice could kill a single human endlessly. In other words, before Beatrice, even death did not mean freedom. Do you need me to put it in a different way? Have you forgotten the day that this man hit you when you swallowed the blood that ran into your mouth? That's right. Remember that taste. Remember the taste of the tears that you spilled until you were dry. I believe this imperative will be sufficient to heal that regrettable memory. <laughs> Once again, the goat servants tilted a deep red glass against her mouth. Rosa tried, resisting by closing her lips, but the deep red liquid was relentlessly poured into her mouth which hung open with shock, and the inside of her mouth was filled with a ghastly sweetness. It definitely was a fragrant sweetness. The living blood of her brother, who had given her such hateful thoughts and made her soak her pillow so many times, had been collected from his death repeated dozens of times. How could the crimson stained wine not be sweet? But Rosa tried to spit it out. Because of that, the deep red wine that spilled out of Rosa's mouth looked just like a blood stain. Now that she knew that this ghastly substance wasn't a simple imperative, Rosa couldn't help but feel uncomfortable about what would happen if this banquet continued. That is a double-tongued salad made from vegetables in season. On your ninth birthday, you made a wish that you'd someday get to eat you. Blech. No! That is a double ton salad made from vegetables in season. On your ninth birthday, you made a wish that you'd someday get to chew this to bits. The salad made from Ava's tongue. <laughs> when Rosa heard the true nature of the pink colored meat piled up in the salad, she had a sudden impulse to vomit her guts out. Furthermore, the goat servant stuck a fork in it and carried it to Rosa's mouth. How does your double tongue sister taste? It must be quite soft and enchanting, right? <laughs> It'd probably be quite sweet and soft and enchanting in her mouth. After all, Ava's lies were always sweet and young Rosa had always listened to them. And you might say this stimulating pepper seasoning expressed the truth behind those lies as well. <laughs> As the tongue salad that kept being pushed into Rosa's mouth was covered with saliva, she spat it out. But the goat servant heads carefully returned it to the plate and carried it to Rosa's mouth over and over again. It goes without saying, but I made this salad liberally using five of Ava's tongues. You can't get more than one tongue out of a person, but I can get them over and over. <laughs> 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 Rosa's tears dripped down. She resisted frantically. However, the only way she could resist was by refusing to swallow. Even if she didn't swallow it, the taste of the French dressing increasingly permeated Rosa's mouth. Does it not please you? There's lots more. Sea bass pie wrapped in the skin of Rudolph's face. Soup with boiled brains. Liver pate. And look forward to dessert. <laughs> It's not just your siblings, see. I have lavishly assembled all of those whom you've trusted and yet by whom you were betrayed. Why don't we continue this banquet for all eternity until your heart is satisfied? For all eternity. You're happy, right, Ushiro Mia Rosa? Don't pretend you hate it. I know you're actually happy, Kay. If you want to laugh, then do so. And you won't feel better until you've heard a raw performance from your annoying older sibling screams. I'll let you hear them as much as you like. Fear not. Your reluctance doesn't trouble me. That's just your personality, right? On the inside, you're actually so happy that your skin is crawling all over. And yet on the outside, you're merely pretending that all this causes you pain, yes. It's alright. Here, there's no need to worry about honor or your public image or anything. 
So laugh as much as you want and chew it to bits. Isn't this the best banquet of Shroomia Rosa? <laughs> to leave dessert as a surprise, but let me reveal it now anyway. Maybe that will be enough incentive for you to eat up the full course. Your dessert is that beloved dart that you had to keep pretending to love. Oven baked Mario with apples. Doesn't that sound yummy? Once you eat this, you'll be released from everything. Freedom, you see. Freedom! Finally, Rosa will gain freedom as an individual person! Aren't you happy? You should be happy. Drill is hanging from your mouth. Just try looking in a mirror! <laughs> Suddenly, a muscular goat cook was holding Maria under his arm, and Maria gazed at Rosa with a face that was only slightly sad. Mama, was I a burden? <laughs> you are a burden! <laughs> As Rosa spat the food that was continually being carried to her mouth, she was covered with filth and saliva and blood. She resisted filthily and screamed. If you think I'm a burden, I don't mind if you eat me. After all, I'm always doing horrible things to you. Even when you bring a man over, I can't stay quiet. When you spend the night out with a man, I get lonely and unruly and make a mess of my room. And when I go to search by myself, I get lost and the police pick me up in your shame. When you don't come home for several days and I cry and I have to be consoled by the neighbors, you're shamed. Because I'm like this, I'm a burden to mama. Sorry for being bored. So I'll become delicious big muffins for muffles. So I messed up. Okay, we'll, we'll try this again. <coughs> Because I'm like this, I'm a burden to mama. Sorry for being born. So I'll become delicious oven baked apples for mama's sake. And then maybe mama will be happy that I exist for the first time. Maybe she'll eat me and think I'm delicious. Isn't it delicious? Be choked up with tears of gratitude. Your daughter is saying this much for you, right? Oven baked apples and your beloved daughter make for the best dessert. You've managed to raise such delicious ingredients. Aren't you the best mother who shoo me a rosa? Mama, thanks for everything. Bye bye. Wait! Wait, Maria! That's wrong! Stop it already! Stop it already! No! I didn't want something like this! Please stop! Please forgive me! No! Stop it already! Don't put it in my mouth! Ugh. 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 Have you been satisfied with my hospitality? Then I'll have you accepted that I'm a witch. Proclaim it! Ushiro Mia Rosa accepts a Beatrice as a witch. Crafty Balor has already surrendered, and I made Rosa the fool deny me, even after being invited to the Golden Land accepted. Perfect! It's perfect! I've accomplished my perfect victory! <laughs> to make me a sandwich. That voice! <laughs> Battler, really? 
and arm grabbed the back of the witch's head and smashed her face into the table. As it did, the witch broke to pieces and turned into a cloud of cold butterflies and reformed her body a short distance away. <coughs> Battler! Y you bastard! I thought you surrendered so far that even your soul was furniture! Me too! But while I was listening to that gross recipe, I started to get a little hungry. Now I feel like eating a whole roast witch! And Maria, it's ten years too early for you to talk about having someone eat you up. But in ten years, you better say that to me, promise. Valor, no! She's a child! And she's related to you! Ah, promise! Battler! Sorry to keep you waiting, Aunt Rosa. I've forgotten. This is a one-on-one -on -one fight between me and this woman. It's totally wrong for me to give in. I see you hanging in there. I've got my will to fight back. This person, he gave up down to the depths of his soul and surrendered to me, didn't he? I see. He doesn't know when to give up. Just what I expect from Ushiro Miyakinzo's grandchild. So the chick of a phoenix is a phoenix after all. <laughs> How dashing! How amusing! I wouldn't have it any other way! I wouldn't have you any other way, battler! Try to deny me! I'll completely and thoroughly smash you to bits! Let's make you surrender over and over again! I'll teach you one who's licked my shoes! The taste of feet over and over again! No problem! I'll teach you that I, who sure me a battler, am a man who can stand back up even after crawling through the mud! I've never been invincible in a fight. I've lost loads of times. But I'll definitely crawl through the mud and stand up again. And then I'll finish this. In a man's fight, you don't lose until you accept defeat, no matter how much you get beat up. Don't think I'm out just because you took a shot at me. I'll give you a good show, Banter DJ! I'll accept your challenge to show me a battler. Furniture, begin preparations for the next game. While we're waiting, why don't you tell me all about it? There are lots of closed rooms in this game. Using red, I've smashed to bits most of the methods by which you tried to talk yourself out of them. What other evasive quibbles will you show me now? The lock to the chapel, the lock to Jessica's room, the lock to the servant room, the lock to Natsui's room, the lock to the parlor. Use your bizarre specialty. Those delusions, rantings, daydreams, and bluffs. All slanted with ridiculous, incredible turn of events. And show me how you can thoroughly deny me! Ah! It's useless! It's all useless! Okay. <laughs> yeah, I probably didn't do this as good. But whatever. <clears throat> okay. Alright. All right, all the, the emotions I was feeling prior to recording this are gone. Thank you, Rosa, for your despair. You helped. <laughs> like, that's one of the reasons I read Umineko in the first place, anyway. I usually just do it to relieve whatever, whatever I've been feeling. Anyway, we have to read the next part. <clears throat> I have to do it all over again. I'm gonna have to check the tips, too. So, episode two, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. Well then, did you find that game enjoyable? A game that one-sided goes beyond riveting. It's boring. <laughs> my, my, but you're as harsh as always. Considering how proud I was to have created a development so... Impactful that it might satisfy even the boredom-hating Lady Burn Castle. This response is quite harsh. <clears throat> Wait, I feel like the song is very loud. <clears throat> How does it look on the thing? I hope it's not too loud for it in general.
Wow, that was surprising. Oops. Oops! Okay, <clears throat> I fixed some of the sound. Alright. Well, I admit, it was impactful. However, it was horrible as a fair game. Unless you make the conditions a bit more even. Are you saying that there's no way to win? Not even for Lady Burncastle. <laughs> I wonder what you mean by that, Beato. There's no need to try and fool me. I already know that you're no bystander. Were you planning on hiding it? You're an outrageous person to come into someone else's territory from such a great distance to work against them. You came to watch from the sidelines and probably to push strongly for my defeat. I've guessed right, haven't I? And if so... <laughs> Truly amusing. Then I should be granted a chance to fight against Lady Burncastle. The strongest of witches who defeated Lady Lambda Delta is truly a pleasure. Yes. I'm also pleased. I came all this way because I really wanted to see you, brimming with confidence, fall apart and lose. What an honest person! <laughs> Even so, it would be a shame the contest between me and the great Lady Burncastle was resolved without at least one observer. You called her here, didn't you? That kid? <laughs> I found you! I finally found you, Castle. How are you, Lambda? Looks like you've got lots of time to spare. I wonder if it's fate that the two who hates boredom should run into each other again. Stupid kid! Can't you see you only won against me because of a little luck and a problem of compatibility? After that, you became such a brag, and now you're even picking up by with Bad Street, Jay? Shouldn't you learn your place? <laughs> Bad Street Jay is strong, and she's even more brutal than I am. Just a bit. And by the way, don't go shortening people's names without their permission. You're dumb- wait, wait, one. My bad. You're dumb too, Beato. If this kid's in your game, she'll make a mess of everything. I certainly didn't just bring Lady Lambda Delta here to watch from the sideline. After informing me that you were betting against me, she said that she would bet against you. You're still holding a grudge, aren't you? <laughs> because I'm the strongest witch in the universe! But I lost to you, which means I'm not the strongest! So any enemy of yours is my ally! <laughs> and there you have it. With a great Lady Burncastle as our opponent. This may not even count as a handicap, but it should make for good entertainment. Do as you like. Now that I've been exposed, allow me to get serious. That would be well. Going easy has never been written in my dictionary. <laughs> Lady Lambda Delta, let us enjoy our precious time together. Yeah, I'll be counting on you, Lady Beatrice. I've been betrayed pretty bad by her, too. Until the two of us smash her up and pay her back double, I won't be able to rest. I'll be counting on you, Lambda. And you, Beato. No matter what we fight over, this will be a significant battle for us all. That's right! Of course I don't plan on losing, but we've got a goal beyond who wins and who loses! After all, we hate boredom. <laughs> the three witches giggled, cackled, and guffawed. That's right. 
I should thank you, Beata. It looks like I'll finally be able to escape my boredom. Do your best to entertain me, along with Lambda Delta. Leave it to me. <laughs> You're very excited, Beato. Well, let's start a strategy meeting right now. I know all this girl's weak points, and I'll teach you all of them. And yet, Lady Lambda Delta, you were defeated by her. <laughs> Ugh, I won't tell you! I won't tell you! Soon! <laughs> <laughs> She's never boring, that Lady Lambda Delta. Isn't she? Take care of her. She gets lonely easily. I see. So she's one of those that are popular these days. <laughs> As expected from Lady Lambda Delta. Quite cutting edge. <laughs> Go already. That kid's waiting for you to chase after her. Then, if you'll excuse me. See you next game! <laughs> I'm sorry. That troublesome one came, but don't mind it. More importantly, things sure got ugly. I thought I experienced a very tragic end in Lambda's game. But this one is exceptionally horrible. I can't say I don't understand why you're hugging your knees and closing up your heart. If you meet a fate like that a few more times, it'll take a lot less than a hundred years to kill your heart. They just saw through me, so I'll confess. You are now just like I was in the past, when I was imprisoned inside Lambda's world. Shut up inside the labyrinth of cruel fate, tormented by a witch in a manner of speaking. I'm a witch who was born from there, so maybe I'm like an older sister to you, so I decided that I'd lend you my power, however, even compared to my fate, yours is truly brutal. Not only do I sympathize with you, I'm almost brought to tears by your tragic fate, but please don't lose heart, please don't submit to Beto, no matter what. Certainly, that child's game is quite unfair. I have only been allowed a glimpse of the game board, but the unfair and clever devices set up on the stage are so disgusting that I imagine they far surpass those on Lambda Delta's game board. And what's even more frightening is that when that kid moves a piece, she doesn't always make the best possible move. This is where she's very different from Lambda. Lambda always uses an overpowering number of pieces to make the best possible move in order to win. But Beta sometimes intentionally goes easy on her opponent when she moves her pieces. Since we're in trouble, we try to seek out our opponent's strategy by looking at their moves. This creates a very formidable amount of noise in our information that might cause a troublesome amount of disorder. However, as in chess, though a player might be able to create some noise for their opponent with a useless move, they'll still miss out on the more valuable move they avoided. In other words, it's not like your opportunities to take advantage of this are zero. Although you may not be able to believe it, that analogy holds true for this game as well. Even though those developments look so overpowering, there actually was a weak point. A weak point that almost looks like she wanted you to take advantage of it. Though, I don't know if it's a trap or she's just testing us. Anyway, don't surrender. Don't stop thinking. Don't deny any possibility. As long as you continue to hold the will to fight, Beato will not win. What's the most important element in defense during a witch's battle? Rather than trying to win, try not to lose. If accepting her means your defeat, then you definitely mustn't accept her. Making you accept witches. There is no longer any doubt that this is one of Beatrice's victory conditions. Now that I have announced that I'm your ally, I too will make a great an effort as possible to lend you my power. Make an effort yourself as well. If you're still hugging your knees, quickly stand back up. 
Um, in times like these, what did I used to say again? Um, uh, go for it! Yay! Me, me, ba! It's so embarrassing doing this. I've done this much for you, so quickly stand back up. Ah! There you are! I wonder where Bird shrank off to. <laughs> Could she be any more lame? Even so! Just like usual, the pieces Burn chooses are pretty shabby. It's the same with chess, right? If all your pieces were pawns, you'd have a zero chance to win, right? If all of your pieces were rooks and bishops, you'd definitely win lose. Well, last time right when I felt just a little pity and said she could start with her pieces anywhere she wanted, that idiot Burn, without taking notice of my compassion, started with all of her pawns on my side of the board! Ow! Just remembering makes me queasy! Because of that, I won't be able to rest until I see Burns' speechless face! And since you, Burns piece, fucked up so bad, I'm feeling just great! Plus, she may not look it, but that girl really hates to lose. So I bet she's off somewhere grinding her teeth and crying her eyes out right now. How totally lame! <laughs> Delta, the Witch of Certainty, and the strongest in the universe, will associate myself just a tiny bit with you and your hopeless chance of that winning. You should thank me. You know, Patriarch may be a really cruel and powerful witch, but she's no match for me. Why? Because she's soft. Though she'll set up a board in a way that'll let her win with just a few more moves, she'll intentionally avoid cornering you. She'll do things like take worthless pieces and place access pieces on the board to make things more one-sided. Simply put, she's got a bad habit of playing around as soon as she thinks she's won. Almost all the various attacks that hurt you and burn look like utter waste and overkill to me. In other words, she's got a weakness and you've got a chance. See? She isn't an opponent to be afraid of, right? She sometimes mistakes her means for her ends, and she has too much dark fun. Sometimes that even ends up creating exposing her own weak points. For a super powerful witch like me, it's hard to understand why she's able to act so tough. Why she lowers her own chances of winning. But well, because of that, a witch like Burn, who likes to thoroughly read her opponent, has a really bad affinity with her. Because reading her doesn't work. Maybe it's really easy for Burn to read and handle a straightforward and honest type like me. But annoyingly enough, Still, a super firepower type like me can flat out beat up a light, wide range barrage type like Beatrice. So it's kinda like rock, paper, scissors. If I'm paper, Beatrice is rock. Which means burn is scissors. Well, that doesn't matter. Even though my paper loses to burn scissors, if I was a sheet of super paper, which is way more awesome than normal paper, I could even beat scissors, right? Basically, I, Lady Lambda Delta, am super paper! <laughs> it looks like you forget a bit of your color. That Banto, she's having fun torture some piece called Rosa. At a glance, you think she has some really nasty tastes, right? Wrong. She's just killing time hoping that you'll stand back up and return. It's a move to fire up your righteous indignation by intentionally doing something detestable. <sighs> Man, I hate kids like that. Anyway, I'll head on back. Me helping you just a little bit. I mean, it's not like I help you because I wanted to save you, okay? I, the strongest witch in the universe, had my throne stolen away when I lost a burn. So I've got to take my throne back from her. If she loses the Bando here, then Bando will get the position of strongest next, right? Well, it's not like I can complain. It'd be easier to steal the throne back from Bando, but then I wouldn't be satisfied, you see. I 
will defeat Burn. And I'll take back my position as the strongest. It's not that I'm really helping you, okay? I will forgive you if you make Burn cry. <laughs> it's kind of funny though. If if I read it in the other position, that would technically be correct. But I don't care. We're doing that way. Oh, I feel sleepy. I'm not gonna read the the other tips that were lost when I was trying to do this. It's just not worth it. It's I. It was very demoralizing losing the footage in the first place. Well, I won't read them. But I guess we could just. Oh, okay, it just does that when that happens. Like that. Ooh, it spreads! That one was introduced, so we can do that one. Okay. Alright. Fine. I, I did it. Oh, good night. Oh, I can't believe I had to re-record that. There's other things I also have to re-record because I screwed it up. Well, thanks for watching. Goodbye.